<laughs> talking about how it, you know running a mile is if you run a five minute mile it's you know better than a 20 minute mile and while we would grant you that you'd be healthy right blood work would not be the same thing though and mm -hmm. that's a major concern it's just because you have increased your ldl or lower lower jldl that's not necessarily a better thing it's physiology has no free pass hormesis and other factors tell us we have curves of toxicity and we can extend this to vitamin we can extend this to to any real part of physiology but most of the time, there is no more is better, less is, is better thing. It, it's usually a curve. So there's some level of toxicity uh, or bad. And then if you get more, it tends to be better. But if you get too much, it tends to go back to being worse. And if you keep going, it tends to be toxic. So we can use any example you want. We will pick, um, since there's a lot of wind blowing right now, we'll pick air. <laughs> <laughs> air seems like a good one. air do I need in my blood? <laughs> well, that's exactly the question, right? <laughs> So oxygen is a very good example. I don't think any of you are willing to go 15 minutes without it, right? So if you were out of air and I gave you a little bit of air, that would make your situation better. If I gave a little bit more, it would make it better. If I gave a little more, it makes it better. But if I keep going, oxygen is the most toxic thing on the entire planet. It will fucking kill you. There's no difference here, right? That's a hermetic curve. That's a very basic thing. There is, everything has a toxicity dosage. Water is the same thing, right? If you're dehydrated and dying of thirst and I give you water, that makes you better. I give you a little bit more water, it's even better. But there's a thing called hyponatremia where if you drink too much water, you can die from that. So everything has a curve there. And in physiology, the problem with blood work and all those things is that exact thing. Is that If we don't know what normal is, I don't know where you are at on that curve. And so really, it's just a guess. It's an experiment. And your ratios are going to matter too. It's, it's not to the, you can't just silo one marker and mm -hmm. say because it's a certain number, that's a good thing. It, it depends on what all, all the, the surrounding numbers that have an effect on that number are at as well. Yeah. Think, instead of thinking of, of whether we're talking about an individual marker in our blood uh, or a protein or a signaling hormone, whatever, it doesn't just do one job. Like we tend, we tend to personify physiology, and that's not the case. So testosterone does not cause muscle growth. Testosterone is just a fucking molecule. Like It's just a molecule. It does a bunch of different things. If you put it in a bunch of different media, it will do different things. It has more than one action. And so when we tend to personify them and say, they're like, oh, this does that, no, because when you mix up the milieu and you change that, it has different functions. Right? Just like water is something you drink. No, water is water. You can drink it. You could do different things with it. It could be a lubricant. It could uh, manage it's temperature. It's, it's not a good lubricant for the right. <laughs> 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 you, you're, you're trying to have sex in a hot tub? Yeah. Viscosity. It just, it just doesn't work. Yeah. Too much viscosity. You, you, have well, you, you can do it. It's possible, but it's, it's possible. Not, not a good lubricant. Right. Anyway. Takes a minute. Boss, <laughs> is water a lubricant? See, thank you very much. It, it depends. The guy that that's runs whole, warships, Doug, he knows, <laughs> he knows more about water. About lubricants and water. <laughs> He's had sex in the ocean it can be before. An insulator, <laughs> it can be an insulator and a conductor. Yeah, it's all those things, yeah. right? And so it has multiple functions. And physiology is really hard because when you um, think of it like this, imagine that there's water in a bowl in front of you. And you take your finger and you put your finger in that water. It doesn't just change the molecules you're touching. Right? It changes the whole picture in the landscape. You push your hand in there, it moves over. Now that, that bowl is a different shape. That's how physiology is. When you move one part, it doesn't just affect that part. Everything else changes around it. So when you move two parts, now multiple things, and that's an exponential change. So just like you said, we have cross-reactivity between everything, hormones, uh, protein, signaling. All that is cross-reactivity. This is why when you have multiple vitamins, there's an, an interactive or a blocking effect. So some vitamins block other vitamins. They enhance absorption of other minerals. Right, another, this is why we can't just live on taking exogenous hormones and minerals and not think we're paying any consequence. Uh, everything matters. So everything is everything like that. It, it, is, it's, it, it is extremely complicated. If you look and Google a map of, say, signaling activity, you can see like a dumbed down version where like, okay, AKT signals mTOR, which signals muscle growth. Kind of. If you look at the actual picture, there's 10,000 different signaling molecules that are responsible for that whole train. You just got the dumbing down two-step version. Uh, and then when you move one and you don't realize, okay, actually AKT signals 85 other proteins that do growth and it signals 30 that do muscle breakdown and it does 80 that do nothing else related and it signals 7,000 do nothing related to that at all. You realize like it's not a simple picture as that. So now that you're all just yeah, yeah. <laughs> holy we're shit, all, we're all over here. Is like you just said a bunch shit. of things. Yeah. <laughs> that as well um, as you're like, well, fuck now. So actually, th th there's something cool. that I've been meaning to ask you uh, <laughs> off the show, but I was asking you on the show. That you, you posted something on social media a while back, uh, and I, I know you've mentioned this potentially on the show before about like where where does your fat go when you burn it? 
Like, oh. would, does it just vanish into thin air? Like, what what, what happens to it? And you post an article that kind of that sums it up. Um, but I hadn't actually read the article. What, what is it? What is the article that you posted on social say? And is, is it different than what you normally are talking about? So I would actually recommend people go read it. It's on CNN. You can see it on my Instagram or any other place you want if you Google around. And what I liked about the article is they're the first person or the first place I've seen where they actually put numbers behind this. Mm. And it tends to make it very tangible. Uh, most people, this is basic exercise physiology. You remember being taught this. Um, I remember sitting in the ex-phys class, so this is nothing new and organic to me. But uh, when you start walking through the ways that you expel waste, people, oftentimes people don't realize that fat is lost through air. You breathe out your fat. Right, so the the quick answer is you breathe in O2, right? It goes in, you breathe out CO2. The difference is carbon. Well, what we don't realize is carbohydrate is a chain of carbon, and fat are chains of carbon. And so when you exhale waste, the end product. Eddie maybe have covered this, and when Eddie Joe was on, but the end product mm. of all metabolism, whether it's carbohydrate, fat, protein, is three things: it's water, ATP, which is the thing you use for cellular energy, and carbon dioxide. So at the end of the day, it's all coming out as those three things. And if you're fully metabolized, that's it. That's your only answer. So when you breathe out fat or when you breathe out carb carbohydrate, it doesn't really matter. It all comes out as CO2. right? Well, carbon has a, has a weight. So if I breathe out more carbon than I breathe in, I lose that amount of physical weight. When I do that a lot, I literally start to weigh less on this planet. Mm. The cool part about the article is they broke down numbers. So they said, okay, the average person breathes this many times throughout the day. They breathe in this much air. It has this much carbon in it. It weighs this physical, this this actual amount, and it walks you through. This is how much you breathe at night. So this is how many pounds you lose at night, or, or you know. And people know this. Spiders know this. This is the drift, right? You go to bed at night. You wake up in the morning. You you weigh a kilo or half a kilo, depending yeah. on the person sort of left. This is why, because you're breathing out CO2 the entire time. This is how many breaths you take, and so it walks you through all these numbers. It's a really interesting article. I have a hour or more lecture on my 55-minute physiology series on fat loss where it walks you through this whole thing. I Actually, people like the part where I walk you through the circle of life, and I explain to you how it goes in the atmosphere, what trees do, because we all know, you know plants do the opposite, right? Plants breathe in CO2 and breathe out O2. They keep the carbon, and so they get bigger. And then what do we do to get the carbon? We eat the plant, right? And, and that's like what people don't understand is um, the middleman. Yeah, it's, it's just a circle of life, right? Yeah. And I, I walk you through and you're like, oh, shit, it makes so much sense. And this is why you can do anything to lose weight as long as you are ingesting less carbon than you're exhaling. Is that kind of where they base the science off of, like, with the Bottega method, uh, like breathing and talking about how they uh, – people talk about, oh, that's great for fat loss. I don't know what I, that I, is. Uh, it's, a, like, control pause control pause it's another form of like breathing the Bottega method mm -hmm. uh, where they would do like these control pause breathing uh, you know I mean with all the breathing that's out now between whim and you know two stage yeah. and all this other type of stuff holotrophic breathing they talked about how uh, in you know breathing in hold exhale for X period of time and this was like a great way to increase fat loss yeah, um, no. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I just wonder <laughs> if that's, but like, if they're saying if that's like some kind of correlation where like, oh, since you're exhaling, you're getting rid of fat, you know, if that was like where they were trying to go with this. I don't know. Um, at some parochial I mean, understanding it's, when it's they the right idea. This. It yeah. is breathing. Right. For sure. That's where you get it out. If you're uh, going to lose it, it has to be through breathing. That's it. So breathe basically. more. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, small amounts do come out in other places. Uh, but yeah, that, that, that may be what they're probably getting. And that's not the wrong idea. Um, but the problem is if when you're holding, you're not exhaling. So it doesn't really matter. It's going to equate in the back end. Uh, what you have to do is put yourself in a situation where you're not consuming as much carbon, which means you're not eating as much. Or you put yourself in a situation where you're hyperventilating, right? And what happens if you hyperventilate? Pass out. You, pa yeah, <laughs> you pass out, right? <laughs> I'm like, I was, like, like, wait, I was waiting for something special to here. This question from GI right Joe to the passing out part, I'm just off. So can you think of a situation, <laughs> though, right. in which you're hyperventilating and you're not passing out? Uh, yeah. When Rim you're off, exercising. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this is, th this is yeah, why, sure. right? Yeah. Like, this is why you exercise to lose weight is because you put yourself in a situation that where you're hyperventilating. Yeah. So I always get this question, then, like, so if I just sit around and hyperventilate, <laughs> like, will I lose <laughs> fat? Absolutely, you will. 
but your, your how, heart rate's going to go up. How like, long? Yeah, metabolic. Like you've just basically yeah. caused you. You've just you have a really sore neck. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Something it, will happen. Yeah. <laughs> turns out it's just not very effective. Yeah. It, it's a very bad way to get yourself to breathe more often. Just exercise, you'll breathe more often that way. Yeah. So in your 